Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do a video that's been requested of me multiple times. So I have made uh, no shortage of videos on my feelings about Rolex over the years. You know, I've made videos on all the different ones that I've owned and I've showcased probably six or seven of my personal collection on this channel. And I've also made, you know, those two videos a while back where I talked about why I sold them all off at one point. And a lot of you guys have asked me, you know, what is it with this constant change in feelings towards Rolex? You know, are you a hypocrite? Why do you keep changing your feelings and what's it about? So, you know, it's one of those things you guys keep asking me the question over and over again. I've explained why I bought some more Rolexes after I sold them all off, but I figured I'd just go ahead and share my Rolex kind of story with you guys. And in talking to the members in the watch community, I've kind of come to the realization that a lot of people in the watch community have gone through similar uh, kind of stories with their Rolexes where they bought them and then they've kind of fallen in and out of love with them. So I figured I'd go ahead and just share my story with you. And let's go ahead and get started with, you know, my life before Rolex and part of the reason why I'm dressed like this. Um, in short, you know, I grew up in a very wealthy area and as a kid, I was always jealous of people that had Rolexes. I saw a lot of people that had them around and I wanted to be part of that lifestyle. I wanted to be seen as sophisticated and I wanted to be part of that group that had Rolexes. Um, at that point in time, not knowing what I know about watches now, to me, Rolex was the ultimate watch to own and to have a Rolex meant that you'd arrived and you had status and that you were sophisticated and successful. And um, quick wrist watch check for this review. I'm wearing my, my Rolexes. I have my GMT Master 2 on. I also have my Rolex Explorer 2 on. Two watches that I do legitimately enjoy. But going back in time, this is me in my late teenage years, uh, I was something that I aspired to own and I wanted to be part of that group. I wanted to be one of those guys that was wearing, you know, an Italian suit. I wanted the Armani shirts. I wanted the Italian ties. I wanted to be part of that sophisticated group. You know, even like the glasses. I wanted to be part of that group. I wanted to be seen as sophisticated and I wanted to feel like I'd arrived and that I was, you know, had that status and somehow was better than everybody else. You know, as a, a late teenager, early 20s, I had that insecurity as a lot of you guys do, and I wanted to have those status symbols to help justify who I was. You know, I started accumulating all sorts of luxury goods. That's when I started buying, you know, like Louis Vuitton wallets and stuff, and I was very status conscious. You know, I was very proud of my BMW, and I was accumulating things, and I was trying to become this sophisticated, status-oriented person. And my first couple Rolexes that I had, you know, I had an Oyster Perpetual, I had a Datejust, I had the Submariner, and as I started collecting these watches, uh, it was just never enough. After I had, you know, the sub, then I had to have, you know, I wanted the Daytona, and then after I had the Daytona, I had to have the President, and it was just this constant, ever-growing need to have more expensive Rolexes, to have more status, because no matter what I bought, and what clothes I wore, and what kind of car I drove, there was always people that had more things than me, had nicer things than me, and I could never have enough. And after a while, thankfully, sometimes you know, we mature in life, and I came to a sense of a little bit of maturity in my life, and I realized that these things weren't making me happy. Um, and I saw people with far less than I had that were much more excited and happy over things that, you know, to me that I would have thought of were kind of meaningless. And I realized too that this wasn't who I am, you know. I can buy expensive clothes and I can have expensive things, but when I think about who I am as a person, they don't really resonate with me. You know, I can dress up and I can do these things, but this isn't who I am. I'm not, you know, into Italian suits. And I'm not, I don't like Louis Vuitton wallets, and I don't, you know, this wasn't who I was. I, you know, accumulated all these status things in life, and uh, I just, I wasn't happy. They didn't define me, they didn't, I didn't feel like I was authentic to myself, and it just wasn't me, you know? And even like cufflink shirts and stuff, I mean, they're just uncomfortable. And it just came to the point where it's like, I didn't know who I was anymore, I wasn't happy with who I was, and I started discovering cheaper watches. You know, I was in this, you know, watch group and was hanging out with people and was discovering other watches that were far cheaper than Rolexes. I also discovered other brands like Jaguar Le Coultre. And I just realized that, you know, these Rolexes that I built up to be so much in my life really weren't what I expected them to be. They kind of disappointed me and they didn't make me happier with my life like I thought they would. And like I said, the lifestyle that was kind of associated with them to me wasn't something that I resonated with. It didn't fit me. You know, I'm a casual guy. <laughs> I like my t-shirts. I'm not into my cufflink shirts. And I have these clothes and I have to wear these clothes occasionally, but they're out of place on me. And these glasses, you know, this is who I am. I'm just a casual guy. I just happen to like watches. I happen to love cars. And in collecting a lot of these watches, these Rolexes especially, I felt like I was very much wearing a mask and it wasn't speaking to who I was. And so when I created my first video of why I sold my Rolexes, 
Um, I reached a point in my life where I reached, in my, at least my own opinion, some level of maturity. I was really enjoying a lot of cheaper watches. The Rolexes to me almost represented that previous version of myself, that status insecure version of myself. I didn't like them reminding me of who I'd been and I didn't like what they portrayed me to the world. And again, of course, too, having also discovered value, I thought, as I complained about in those videos, that the service expenses on them were silly and I just everything about them. I didn't like the lifestyle that they portrayed. They didn't fit who I was and who I saw in the mirror every day was not a person that wore Rolexes. They didn't resonate with me. So I sold them all off and I very much tried to go find myself in this world and I focused on watches that I enjoyed. You know, I wasn't, I came to a point where I was very much about what made sense for me. I didn't, I wasn't so concerned about how people saw me anymore. And it was a very freeing thing. I found that I was a lot happier with things that when I bought them because of how they made me feel versus how I was going to be portrayed and seen by others. So I sold all my Rolexes off. As you guys know, I went on this, you know, multi-year journey without them. I think I was without Rolexes and a lot of my expensive watches for at least two years. And as I continued to mature, I recognized that there was still a part of me, a legitimate part of me that was still attracted to Rolex. And it wasn't for what they said about me. It was just that I appreciated them as watches. I appreciated that they used a higher grade of steel. I appreciated that they did almost everything made in Switzerland, that they were very true to their heritage and that they very much did things their own way. And as a watchmaker, taking the status aside from Rolex, Rolex does a lot of things really well. And there's a lot of things about the company that I greatly appreciate. And having been able to get away from them and to separate myself from that whole status oriented consciousness related to them and to pull back and just appraise them as a watch and not see them as the status symbols that society phones over. Now that I can look at them again as a watch, I appreciate them as I should as a watch as I appreciate all of my watches. And then from that mindset, it's when I decided I want to get reinvested in Rolex and the brand itself. And I bought some watches from them that I typically wouldn't have bought, you know, for example, my Explore 2, um, when I first started getting into Rolexes, uh, I thought I was too good to own an Explore 2 in all honesty with you. I thought Explore 2 was the poor man's sports Rolex and to me it was beneath me and that's why I went ahead and I bought the Daytona and even like the Submariner, I thought the Submariner was that much better. I was too good to wear it and now that I own it, this is, you know, honestly I think probably my favorite Rolex that I've owned, surprisingly. Um, and the same thing with the GMT Master too. I like the GMT but after I had the Sub, I decided I wanted to step up to a Daytona and the President um, but now again, investing in these watches is just something that makes me happy that I'm attracted to. I bought the GMT Master because it reminds me of Pan Am and aviation and I'm just really big in airplanes and aircraft history. And so these two watches are ones that I bought for me. I didn't buy them for anybody else. And I think that's kind of the journey we all kind of go through. Um, it, I shouldn't say we all, that's, that's very general. A lot of the guys that I've talked to in the watch community and gals too, I know you guys have gone through similar things. You may have bought Rolexes because society told you they were great watches or because you wanted to own them for status or to feel like you've arrived. You got them, you realize that they didn't make you fulfilled and you got away from them. And then, you know, as you've learned more about the community and more about the watches, you may have found yourself actually coming back to them and enjoying them as, you know, watches and seeing them for what they are, not as these, you know, overblown status symbols that people tend to get so polarized by. So that's kind of been my story with them. You know, like I said, I, I came into Rolexes and watch collecting as a very insecure person. And, you know, once I started having money, I just went out and bought all the trappings that I thought would make me look successful. I bought all the expensive shoes, the expensive suits, the accessories. You know, I had to have everything with brand names. I had to have my Louis Vuitton wallet to match my BMW and my multiple Rolexes and my Italian shirts. And I, I went down that thing and all my, I bought all my Burberry polos. So you guys could see my Burberry check pattern. And it's like, I very much had to go fill that role. And then I realized that that wasn't who I was. I didn't like the person I was betraying and it didn't resonate with me. And I was, again, surprised that these people were so much happier with so much less than I had and that this stuff was just kind of irrelevant. And I had to do kind of a spiritual cleansing and I had to get rid of a lot of that stuff and I had to go find myself because I'd been defining myself by all these things in my life. So I sold them all off and I kind of moved on. And now that I'm at a place in my life where I feel like I know who I am and well, mostly, and I, I like who I am and I'm now able to be comfortable in buying things that just speak to me, I brought Rolexes back into my life I appreciate them for what they are. I think Rolex makes a fantastic product. Not only do they tend to hold their value well and they're always gonna be popular, they actually make a pretty good watch. And you know, seeing them for what they are now, I'm happy to own these two. As I've made no secret of in the community, they're not my favorite watches. You guys know my heart still lives with Seiko. Although with my recent issue with my Saab 35, Seiko's going a little bit down the ladder. 
But anyway, I appreciate them. I like them both, and I'm very blessed to own these two. Um, and I'm sure I'll may own more in the future. And I've owned, you know, more Rolexes than most people ever get a chance to, and I'm very blessed for that. So that's my story. Let me know what you guys think below. I'd love to hear if you guys have had similar feelings about Rolexes or luxury watches in general. That's just kind of my personal experience. Um, at the time this video is coming out, you know, to forgive me, I'm at one of the most busiest points in the year right now, career-wise, and I may not get a chance to respond to all of your comments. I'll actually be um, all over the place, so, um, but I do try to read them, and I appreciate them more than you know. So with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning to tune in. Um, one thing, too, one of my, my, my viewers that views a lot, Steve, I really appreciate your commentary. He let me know that uh, he got unsubscribed from my channel somehow. I'd heard about this happening on YouTube, but honestly, I didn't give it much thought. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But now that I've seen it happen on my own channel, just be aware too, not only with my channel, but with others. If you're not seeing videos pop up from some of your favorite YouTube channels, apparently there's some sort of a glitch that's unsubscribing people from channels. So, you know, my subscription rates have kept climbing, so I guess I didn't really notice it, but it clearly it is an issue. Just something to be aware of. Again, not just with me, but with any of the channels you watch, you may have been un accidentally unsubscribed from them somehow. So. All that said, guys, thank you so much. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And as always, somewhere around here, there'll be a subscribe button so you guys can catch me on the next video. I'm so blessed to have you, and I hope you're having an awesome day. Thank you.